Okay class, so let us now come to the part 2 of the topic in power plant engineering, the cooling tower. So, last meeting, we tackle more on the derivation or the theories involved in a cooling tower. So, like say for example, some definition, like say for example, range, theoretical range, the actual range, approach, and so on and so forth. So, by this time, so we'll now take up examples on how we are going to apply the definitions of cooling tower. Okay? So, let us consider this. Water enters a cooling tower at 45 degrees Celsius. The approximate living water temperature is 30 degrees. If the atmospheric condition is 25 degrees, wet bulb determine the cooling effectiveness of the cooling tower. So, when we say cooling tower effectiveness, we are referring for the efficiency of the cooling tower. So, let us now break down the given of this problem. So, the temperature of a, uh, water entering the tower is 45 degrees. The wet bulb temperature of the air entering the tower is 25 degrees. And the temperature of the cold water is 30 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, knowing that the cooling tower efficiency is equal to the actual range over the theoretical range or that is equals to the temperature of uh, water entering the tower minus the temperature of the water, uh, leaving the water, uh, leaving water rather, divided by the temperature of a minus the wet bulb or the temperature of the entering water minus the wet bulb temperature multiplied by 100%. Okay, so substituting values, the answer now is 75%. So, therefore, the effectiveness of the cooling tower is 75 degrees. So, take note, class, that the illustration of the basic uh, cooling tower is, of course, illustrated here. Okay? So, that is now the answer, 75%. Okay, so let us again consider another example. Okay, so we have here a cooling tower is to provide cooling for jacket water for a four stroke 800 kilowatt diesel generator whose efficiency is 97%. Cooling tower efficiency is 60% at a temperature approach of 10. Okay? So, the ambient air has a relative humidity of 70%, wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures of 27.4 and 32 degrees Celsius respectively. Useful work and cooling loss is 30% and 25% of the energy chargeable to the engine respectively. Take density of water at 1.0069 kilogram per liter. Okay? So, let us now determine the temperature of water entering the tower. Okay? So, the given, of course, is the uh, electrical power or the combined power, which is 800 kilowatts, the generator efficiency of 97, calling tower efficiency is 60%, the approach is 10 the relative humidity of 70, and then this uh, of 27.4, meaning the dry bulb temperature of air, and are uh, the, yes, the wet bulb temperature rather, and the dry bulb is 32, and the break thermal efficiency is 30, and the efficiency of the jacket is 25%. Okay? So, let us now solve the temperature of the entering water in the tower. Okay? So, knowing the approach is equal to T sub 2 
minus the wet bulb temperature. T sub 2 here is the temperature of the living water or the cold water. So, getting now T sub 2, the value is 37.4. Okay? So, getting now the efficiency or substituting the efficiency of 60% and then getting the value of T sub A. Okay? Or T sub 1. So, T sub 1 or T sub A represents the temperature of the water entering the tower. Meaning, the hot water coming from the diesel engine. So, therefore, the temperature now of the water entering the tower is 52.5 degrees Celsius. Okay? Again, so determining the power input to the generator. Okay? So, knowing that the generator efficiency is 97% and the definition of the generator efficiency equals to the combined power divided by the brake power. So, therefore, getting now the brake power, the answer now is 1,105.15 horsepower. Okay? So, another... Getting the volume of flow rate of the cooling water and the cubic meter per second. So, again, getting the energy chargeable. Knowing that the thermal efficiency is 30%. So, the energy chargeable now to the engine is 2,749.14. And then getting that the heat carried by the jacket water is 25% of the energy chargeable. So, again, multiplying the energy chargeable by 25%. The jacket uh, or the heat carried by the jacket water now is 687.29 kilowatts. And knowing also that the heat carried by the jacket water is equals to MCP delta T. Substituting now the values QG of 687.29 is equals to mass multiplied by 4.19 which is the specific heat of water at constant pressure multiplied by the change in temperature between the entering and leaving water. So, the mass now is equals to 10.86 kilogram per second. So, changing now this to cubic meter per second, that is equivalent to 0 0.011 cubic meter per second. So, the uh, problems in calling tower is sometimes easy and sometimes become complicated. So, this is the previous example is an application of a performance, of the performance of diesel engine involving calling tower. Okay, so another example class. So, we have here. Calling tower has an efficiency of two-thirds. So, it has a temperature range of 20 and a temperature approach okay. Is approximately blank. Okay. So, that is the unknown. Approach. So, knowing that calling tower efficiency is equals to two-thirds and the range is 20 degrees. Okay. So, substituting now from the uh, calling tower efficiency formula. So, and then getting the theoretical range TE minus TWB or the temperature of water entering the tower minus the wet bulb temperature of the air entering the tower. So, and then getting now the wet bulb temperature. So, that is the difference between the temperature of Entering water minus 30. So, substituting now the approach. So, it is equals to TE or TB rather. Temperature of the cold water minus temperature of the hot water minus 30. So, getting the approach now is equals to minus 20 minus 30 or the approach is equivalent to 10 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, this is manipulation of the equation. So, be careful. 
in the substitution of the equation and then take note also of the signs of the equation okay thank you very much class so that ends my presentation or the second part of the calling tower thank you very much